when I arrived in Hungary, it was my first week, I had gotten to try all kinds of different types of food. I served in a city called Nidajaza, and the old ladies there, we call them nannies, they could cook like no other. And they would, they just wanted to feed us all the time, and that's really rare. Um, so I got to eat right off the get-go. I got to eat a lot of different types of food. And I think the best um, Hungarian food I ever had was fruit soup. And you think of fruit soup and it's kind of like mm, fruit soup that doesn't really work, right? And that's what I, that's the exact same thing I thought too. fruit soup that doesn't really go together It's not like peanut butter and jelly, you know, it's not like chips and salsa. It's fruit and soup and so uh, This nanny just gave it to us and she was like, hey, you know, he here it is. It looked delicious It was like a pink purple color. It just was glowing and I was like, wow, this is what fruit soup is She said, do you like it hot or cold? I was like, oh, I could try it hot and she looked at me she's like no I think I think you would like it cold I'm like all right so she gave it to me and first bite I just fell in love absolutely just drop down to the ground and just almost started worshiping the soup it was so good <laughs> um, and it's really easy to make um, I mean go online look it up um, but it's delicious it's really good and that's that's something that's very very unique to Hungary is the fruit soup so if you go to Hungary try the fruit soup it's really good you won't be let down the, um, bad foods there's a uh, sausage they have different uh, tons of different kinds of sausage there they have a uh, horse sausage they have pig sausage chicken sausage all kinds but there's one particular sausage that I just despised I guess that's a good word. <laughs> hated I don't know it was really really bad uh, first of all it looks black it's like a black sausage they call it hurka that's the name for it and it was served to me um, from a gypsy family um, and gypsies cook really really good food by the way so I mean this isn't this is just something that all Hungarians eat this isn't just gypsies and uh, I just tried it and I thought it was the most disgusting thing and you ask anybody that knows me I I am very brave when it comes to food I can eat anything um, but this hurka stuff I just could not I could not shove it down in my throat um, so what it is it's blood sausage and so I, I mean they take every single part of the pig I guess it's what sausage is anyways um, but they it's just oh just the way that they cook it and like put it together you like when you eat it you can you know like kind of start picking little pieces of bones out of your teeth because it's just gross um, but they love it that's something that's really really unique to Hungary as well as a horka so if you want to try something unique try that a lot of Hungarians love it um, but me no like no thanks I didn't I didn't really like it very much but it was I mean it was very unique so you know Try it. You have to try it. It's not a Hungarian experience unless you try it. Um, there was another um, dish that they served called korcoya, and what it was is that what they do is they put they put fat into a bowl, and then they throw like parts of a pig or I don't know just like any type of meat in it, and then they put it in the freezer. They eat it in winter time. They put it in the freezer. And after a certain amount of time, they take it out and they just serve it to everybody. And of course, they season it. You know, they put like pepper, salt, and stuff in the fat and everything. Um, but that stuff is just it's just really really bad. It's really, I wish I could I, I could have brought pictures because there were pictures of me eating it and there was a before and after picture I looked really happy that I finally had you know Korchoya in my hands. I was like wow. This is legit Hungarian This is good stuff. And then the next picture just my face was like this like oh I had yeah It was really really bad. So the Korchoya and the Hurka. I think those are two of the most disgusting yet awesome Hungarian foods out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could talk about the food for days. Hungarians are really proud of their kitchen. They're really proud um, about, you know, their cuisine and things that they have. Yeah, they really like stuffed cabbage too. Try stuffed cabbage. It's really, really good. Tefel tutut kapusta. If you're Hungarian, you're watching this and you heard those two words, you're probably nodding your head like, oh yeah, baby, that stuff's good, delicious. Um, it's, deli it's, it's great. I mean, Hungarian, most of the, everything, mostly everything in the Hungarian cuisine is awesome. So you, I mean, you won't be disappointed. And coming, coming from a Mexican culture, we have really, really good food and we're really, really proud of our food and the way we cook it. The Hungarians, I mean, they're, we're like right here and Hungarians are like, they're like up here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they cook really good food. You won't be disappointed. Um, they cook a lot of it in Greece. They use a lot of oil and things like that. Um, but they still manage to keep, you know, pretty good. They still manage to stay in shape.
So, I mean, us Americans, we deep fry everything and grease and stuff like that. And, you know, all of us are a lot of, <laughs> a lot of us are a lot, like kind of overweight. And we're really, really hungry, but everywhere else was closed. We didn't have any food in our apartment and we were just starving. We hadn't eaten all day. And we're looking around for some places to go and we see this place shining right before us and it says Burger Pub. And so we decided to go there because we're, I mean, there's no other place was open. It kind of sounds a little skeptical, right? It has pub in it, but it's like, okay, well, if they have burgers and we're going to get some burgers. So we went inside and uh, I remember just thinking like, okay, this is going to be a typical Hungarian burger. It's going to be, you know, just not very good. <laughs> Typically they, the solar giant, they're probably like this big and they, I mean, it's pretty much all bread. Um, and they put like three tiny little circles of meat in there along with some tomatoes, lettuce, uh, and then they put tons of sauce in it. And so when you're eating, you taste a little bit of meat, a little bit of tomato, a little bit of lettuce, and then just tons of sauce. So that's kind of what I was expecting. But at this point I could have eaten anything. So we went in there and, uh, we sat down and look at the menu. It says you can order like a brutal burger, um, uh, you know, like a vegetarian burger, all these, di there's all these different kinds of burgers. It's like, okay, like I'll get the brutal burger. So let's see how brutal this thing really is. So he brings it out. I remember, and it just was beautiful on the plate. Like just um, a fat, juicy looking American, uh, patty was on there and it had like onions. It had a, um, I don't know, a stick going through it. So it looked even better, you know, just like, it just really looked, it looks really oily and greasy, just delicious, just like heaven. And so I'm sitting here, there's like music playing in the background and there's this light shiny behind this burger that's coming to me slowly. And I just, I'm the happiest person in the world. So we both get our burgers, we eat our burgers, delicious. And we start to leave and we think the the manager for the meal it turns out they just opened like a week before that a week or two before that and he speaks english he lived in england for a while usually hungarians sometimes they go to england they come back and they speak really well and so we're just talking to him and he was like wow you guys are americans and we told him that this burger was even better than some of the burgers that we've had in america and he flipped he was so happy about that compliment he told us that if there's anything any type of um any piece of advice that we could give him for his restaurant for the recipe or anything like that then go ahead um, I mean he was just willing to take in anything and so we both sat there looked at each other and thought wow he could really maybe use a fry sauce because he had really good french fries and so typical fry sauce in the US right mayonnaise ketchup you have you know your um, salsa in there maybe even some pepper so I don't know just whatever and but the base was the the honey the um, the mayonnaise, the ketchup, and the pepper. That's like all we told him. And oh, we told, well, we told him some other things, but I, I don't know if I can disclose those things <laughs> right now. It's a secret, secret recipe. So he told us that he was going to try it. He was going to try the French fry sauce. And so we leave the restaurant thinking that there's no way in heck that he's going to try this. And we come back about two days later, two, three days later, and to order another burger just because it was so good. And he was like, guys, guys, guys came up to us. You wouldn't believe how awesome this is. We're like, well, what's going on? That, f that fry sauce recipe that you gave me, we used it and people love it. Like they're ordering it like crazy. Um, they just, they love it a lot. I mean, it's delicious. Like they love it. They're like, yeah, we put a little Hungarian twist on it. We added some paprika and some other things, but people love it. And then me and Elder Judd looked at each other. We're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> he uses it now. And so we looked at each other like, holy cow. And I looked at him, the, the, the store owner. And I was like, Hey, uh, so if I wanted to order right now, what would I call it? And he looked at me, he's like, well, we decided to call it Andrew sauce. And that's my first name. And so I was like, you're calling it Andrew sauce. So my companion looked at me like, wait, why isn't it? Why can't it be Alex sauce? Like I, you know, I put some input in it as well. Uh, but he, they called it Andrew sauce. So whenever the missionaries went to burger pub and wanted the, the American fry sauce, they always asked for Andrew sauce. It was pretty cool. And it's still there and it's on the menu. So it's pretty big. It's like, it's a really bold print too. Um, and we became really good friends, me and the store owner. So if you ever go to Nita Chaza, which is a must-see place in Hungary, and you ever go to the Burger Pub, which you will see, it's next to the Notch Templum, then you will, you will have my fry sauce. <laughs>
Right. So the Hungarian people are awesome people. Um, I've never met people that are so loving, um, so willing to serve, um, so so willing to give so much of themselves for you. They they definitely have a way of showing um, of showing a different kind of love that you can only find in Hungary. You can't really find it anywhere else. And it's, I mean, you feel, you definitely feel like you become the child even at some point. Um, they always invite you over for food. They, just the way that they talk about themselves, they're not prideful people at all. They're very, very humble people. Serving in Hungary is a very, very humbling experience. Um, they're very, very humble people. Um, I think the things I learned from Hungarians the most though was that we just need to, you know, one of the things is that we just need to laugh at ourselves whenever we mess up or whenever we, whenever we fail. I don't know, just things like that. Hungarians were always able to just laugh at that and, and move on. Uh, for me, you know, I, I don't like failure. I don't like losing and stuff. So that was really cool to see just them get through that, um, especially after all they've been through, like I said, World War II and things like that. They're just really able to kind of like, not like brush it off because they definitely haven't forgotten about it, but they, they're able to move on with their lives. They're able to get past it. I think that's something that's really neat about the Hungarian culture that they have really strong spirits They're just always willing to get to know you get to know new people At First they might be kind of standoffish. They're really formal when they first meet you It's not like here in America where you could just like go up to them and hug them and be like, Hey, how's it going? You know, like yeah, sweet like my name's Andrew, you know, they, they would think that was really weird You can't do that. Uh, you know, it's really formal. They they really uh they really think it's weird if you try to, if you just like say hi to them on the street. They're like, what the heck? I don't know that person. Some people like take it really well, but most people are like, I don't know you. Why are you saying hi to me? There's one nanny I said chocolum too. It means like kiss you on the hand. It's what we usually say and how we greet nannies. And she like turned back at me. And I remember we we're walking away and she kept on saying, Nemi Shmedam, Nemi Shmedam. That means I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. <laughs> and she it was like a broken record. She kept on saying it over and over again. She was just so confused. Why is it hi? to her uh, so I mean that was really funny but the, the Hungarian people are just awesome they're great people they're really smart um, they've invented just about everything in the books um, and they're really proud of it too I mean you just have to go there to really experience the people um, unique people great people loving people smart people it really is just a different experience there was a lady um, in my first area, Nida Chaza, I keep on, you know, shout out to Nida Chaza. She would always feed us. Her name was Magi. She would always feed us. And then anything that she had left over, she would just give to us. So if she had left over sliced meat, left, which she always made sandwiches. Um, she, if she had left over sliced meat, she would give it to us bread. She would always give us chocolate, sometimes with alcohol in it, but I don't think she realized there was alcohol. Uh, she would give us all this stuff and just tell us to take it home. And I literally like cried a couple of times just because I mean her life story is just it's it's really sad and she's always she's just still willing to to give you know that's how most Hungarians are is they even though they've gone through so much in their lives they are always they're still willing to give to give to anybody and to you know just be happy about it like it's not a favor it's something that they really like doing they really enjoy doing tracting we'd knock on doors whenever i mean we didn't get let in a lot but whenever we did get let in there's always a water um offered they, they always asked if it asked us to sit down make ourselves comfortable if we wanted water they'd make us some water or they would give us food almost every sing every single time actually i don't remember a single time when they didn't do something like that for us Hungarians, like I said, are very, very giving. They're very um, service-oriented people. You see a lot of the younger people even walking their grandpas and grandmas on the street. Like, it's it's the coolest thing ever to see that. You don't really see that here too often. Um, so they're really, they really just have a different way of showing you their love. And so I think that's one of the biggest things I learned from Hungarians um, was the, the love, the service, and the respect. So living in Hungary is really safe actually. There's really not a lot of crime that happens. And it's, for the most part, I mean, you could walk pretty much anywhere and you'd be okay. But in my first area, there's a place, um, and it was a Tsigan Talap. It's a gypsy settlement. And I really wanted to go there because I really wanted just to meet, like, I really wanted to get into the gypsy culture and see how they lived and stuff like that. And so we, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> we just decided to go over there and, and we didn't even really know where it was. We were just riding our bikes and kind of exploring everything. And we saw this trail. It just took us down to the settlement and we parked our bikes. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have parked them near that near that settlement. Really dangerous, but I mean, we did. We came back, nothing happened. Um, but we parked in there. We tied them up, um, and we just went out and started to try to find people in that in that area. And I remember there was a huge soccer field, a huge dirt soccer field in the middle, and then all around the soccer field were like almost they almost looked like abandoned buildings. Um, abandoned ho like apartment buildings. Um, they didn't have any doors, any windows, nothing. I mean, I think people used like blankets and stuff to cover up the um, the openings for in the for windows and stuff. So I mean, it was really, really scary how they lived. Um, I mean, you, I just looked at it and was like, how are these people living this way? There's a lot of chickens everywhere. It was just, it was crazy. And so I remember we were walking and then right away immediately, like. 20, 30 kids came up to us and they they were asking where we were from. Uh, I had a watch on. It was like a, I think it was just some like Casio watch. Like, oh, are you rich? You have that watch and stuff. You guys are from America. You have to be rich. And we're, we just were saying, no, no, like we're not rich. We're just missionaries. Like, well, why are you wearing a, sh a tie and a white shirt? You know, you guys look really nice. Where are you guys from? Or you guys are from Jesus Christ. And they just kept on going on and on. And like, they didn't really let us talk. And so <laughs> they were just like yanking on stuff. And, uh, and uh, we're just sitting there and they really started to warm up to us. It was really weird because, um, I mean, we, did, we definitely didn't think that that was going to happen. We thought that they're going to try to steal something from us or something. But uh, no, it was cool. And then I remember we we're sitting there talking to them just like about religion and stuff, why we were there, what, where we came from in the U.S. and things like that. And then they asked me um, if I played soccer. And then I said, I just looked at one of the kids. I'm like, do you want to play soccer right now? And he looked at me, he just shook his head and smiled like this. And he went and grabbed a soccer ball, just this torn up, beat up thing, um, brought it out. And we played soccer with them, with a ton of little kids. And then there was, their parents came out like, who are these kids playing soccer with? Like a bunch of guys in white shirts and ties. <laughs> we were playing in a frost lighting clothes. And... Um, it was a blast. The kids started fighting each other, like punching each other in the face and stuff, roughhousing. So we got out of there really quick. Uh, so with the language, there's a couple things I wish I would have practiced a little more, and that is the u uh and the u uh sounds. So, um, for example, a really good word is shoelace. Shoelace, shoelace and camera. Okay, I'm gonna give you two examples. Shoelace is tsipu fuzu. I still can't even say it right to this day, I think. <laughs> and then the camera is fin cape as a gape. So if you can say your u uh and your u uh, right, then you'll get the language down pretty quickly. I'm um, at the beginning, you'll get a pretty good head start. Or like tsi pu fu zu. You don't wanna say that because Hungarians can definitely tell the difference in the intonation when you say u uh and u, uh. it's crazy. I mean, you're listening to this right now, you probably can't tell the difference, but they can tell the difference and they're really picky about it and they will correct you in the language. Um, they're really nice about that as well. They'll really help you with the language. In a lot of countries, um, you know, they, they kind of give you a hard time for trying to learn their language, but in Hungary, they really, really admire you. So if you go to Hungary and you get your U and your U down, then the people will be really impressed. Um, so that's something that I wish I would have practiced a little bit more. Um, oh, and another one is Zöld. That's, it means green, but I mean, to this day, I feel like I still can't even say it right. It's like zöld, zöld. It just feels weird coming out of an American mouth, you know, like it's just, I don't know, it's strange. So it definitely feels weird. You definitely have to get used to a lot of it. Just speak it all you can. Just give it your best and it'll come. Okay, so I'm just gonna introduce myself as if I were a greenie. Hoj Vaj, so and so, Frisian Yutem America Bull, Yutem America Rule, um, Ejnap ezelőtt és nagyon szeretek itt lenni és nagyon szeretek a mar a magyar etol meg a a magyar uh, a magyar uh, emberek embereket uh, yeah so that's pretty much what it is <laughs> In a nutshell, it's basically what it is. So for an experienced missionary, it's going to be Hojvad Gaitan. My last name is Gaitan. So I'd say Hojvad Gaitan Elder Vagyok. Jöttem Amerikából. Most megyek vissza Amerikába. Holnap. 
um, nem várom, um, de nagyon szeretem a magyar embereket, nagyon szeretek itt lenni, nagyon szeretem a magyar ételt, um, és igen, csak nagyon szeretem Magyarország, Magyarországot. Um, hopefully you could, you, know, tell, you could tell the difference. <laughs> so the weather in Hungary, uh, so I kind of had this... Uh, picture in my head of what Hungary looked like year-round and it was just blizzard and snow and I thought it was gonna be tracting and streaking in the snow and just freezing freezing myself freezing my butt off um, and I that, that that's just how I pictured Hungary and I remember I got there and I got there in the summertime I got July, there in, right? I got there in July that's when it was and it was summertime and it was really really hot <laughs> it, I was not expecting that. Flying into Hungary, I saw these green trees and everything. I expected to see, you know, everything just dead and white and gray and stuff. Um, but no, it definitely wasn't like that. It was beautiful in the summertime. It was really humid, especially in Budapest because you have the Danube that just runs through right there. And so there's a lot of the moisture um, that comes from that. Gets in the air. Um, gets really hot when you're shredding in Budapest. Really, I mean, uh, the summer was beautiful. It was really hot, but it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sunflower fields everywhere in Hungary. Um, so if you're on the trains and stuff, you look out left to your right, you just see tons of like sunflower fields. And that was really beautiful to see in the summertime. The winter time though was actually really cold. So I was wrong about it being year round, but I wasn't wrong about the winter time. Um, it really is that cold. I remember um, I actually fell on my fell on my butt a couple times walking through the snow just slipping and fell like four or five times in one day I remember it was really really rough and it was really just like gloomy and um, it was really dark I think the fall is the prettiest time you know all the colored leaves and all the buildings beautiful buildings European architecture um, it was just it was really really pretty okay so a good way to describe the Hungarian economy um, it's like 30 they're like about 30 years behind us middle class so i mean that, that's the average that's their that's like the average person there are a lot of buildings that were built by the russians when they were when they occupied hungary during world war ii and a lot of hungarians live inside of them especially in aired if you go to like the outer um, cities in towns around budapest you'll find a lot of that um, and they're panel apartments it's just it's really sad to see people living in that because i mean they're really really um, i lived in one <laughs> in aired and so i got to experience firsthand and it was just really it was really tough. We had no AC. The carpet was just, it was pretty bad. Um, our faucet didn't work. There's almost everything in the apartment basically wasn't working. And so a lot of people live in those and you'll just see building after building after building after building of apartments. And you're just like, wow, I think in one building I, I tracked it, there was like 200 rooms. Um, there, so there's a lot of those. A lot of people live in those. Um, a lot of people are working more than one job, but I mean, they're the hardest working people I've ever seen. Here, you don't really see old people walking around all the time. You know, they're always in, you know, in a retirement home or, you know, just knitting or something. I don't know, whatever they do. In Hungary, you see them around everywhere. The, the old ladies are walking. They could have like the worst, you know, case of... Um, they could have the worst case of scoliosis, but they're just walking around everywhere and going grocery shopping and just doing things like that. And it's, it's really impressive to see. They, they love the outdoors. They love talking to people. The old people love talking. And I mean, they're, they're the most lively people, some of the most lively people I've ever met. Once you crack that shell, they do have a shell around them that's kind of it's like, oh, why are you talking to me? But when you can actually uh, start making them feel comfortable around you, and when they do feel comfortable, everything from there just, they just, they can't get enough of you. So that was, that was a cool thing about Hungarians is, is they just, once you, you know, once you break that shell, once you get to know them, they trust you, then it's like, they never want you to leave. Um, and that was really cool. There's a lot of um, beautiful houses in Hungary. Um, they look a lot different. They don't really have a, um, there's, you know how your typical, you know, American home is its front yard, backyard, and that's it. Hungarians, they have a huge fence around where they live, and they uh, their houses doesn't really have like a front to it. It does, I, a lot of houses do, I guess, there, but 
you'll see a lot of the houses that don't have a front to it and the doors are actually a lot different. Um, I had a door in my first apartment and it kind of looked like a couch. It had like little buttons and stuff on it. <laughs> and they don't really have doorknobs as much as we have here. They're just kind of, it's like you put your key in, unlock the door, then you pull the, the little handle that's there. So that's another thing that's different about Hungary. And on the streets and stuff, and a lot of the condos and things like that, um, we'd have to knock on people's windows because their door would be on the complete other side of the house in their backyard. So the front door was like a, a gate and you could ring the doorbell, but in order for them to come out, they'd have to go out the back and then come around and open the gate. And so you can imagine how frustrated some people got during the winter time, like who's knocking on my door at six o'clock at night? <laughs> to missionaries, you know, that's definitely the last thing that they want to hear. Um, a lot of people travel by train, um, they call them Bilamos or Vonat. Um, you can take, we took a lot of buses. So the produce is a lot more organic than here in the US. It goes bad a lot faster. The housing is a lot cheaper than the US. I knew some Americans that just moved to Hungary for the housing. Um, it's really, really cheap living. Um, but the food is about the same, um, if not more expensive. Uh, so it's even harder for Hungarians. I think minimum wage there is, I think about our, our the dollar, it's like 4.95 or something like that. I don't know, something really, really low. No, that's a good job, I think. I don't know. It's, it's somewhere around there, $4, $3. Um, so a lot of them have about three jobs, and they have to pay for things. I mean, besides their living, everything's just as, it's just as costly as everything here in the U.S. And like I said, if not more expensive. If you want to get um, you know, a Nike shirt there, it costs like 40 bucks for just like a Nike t-shirt um, because you know, it's shipped all the way from the U.S., and they put it in, you know, to Hungary and stuff. So it costs a little bit more. Clothing is definitely a lot more expensive there. So there's two kinds of Catholics. Um, there was Gura Katholikus, that's Greek Catholic, and there's Roma Katholikus, and that's Roman Catholic. Um, and there's Evangelikus, Reformatus, Evangelist, Reformist. Um, there's a couple of Jews there, I think, on the Pesh side. Um, so it was, it was just, you had a huge variety of things, but I'd say the biggest... The biggest um, religion there was with Catholicism. It's it's a cultural thing as well. It's not really necessarily just a religious thing. Uh, we talked to a lot of people that um, that were Catholic, but they didn't. They said they didn't believe in God. Like, yeah, I'm Catholic, but I don't believe in God. We're like, oh well, you know, Catholics believe in God, so why don't you believe in God? It was, the older people were the more traditional Catholics. They were the really strong Catholics. Um, and I mean, you had World War II, you know, what happened with Hungary and stuff like that. The war either made it, made them or broke them. And so you have these old people that are really strong and then these other old people that have just completely given up on life. I didn't really see a gray area. It was, all the, it was always either one or the other. Um, and it was really sad to see. I remember one time I was talking to a lady, um, an old lady on the street, an old woman on the street, and she looked super sad. So I tried to talk to her and she... Um, she didn't, she just didn't really want to talk to me. So I kept on being persistent, like missionaries, <laughs> like missionaries should be. And I just really wanted to help her because she looked really sad. And I asked her, I was like, well, you know, do you believe in God or do you believe uh, in a life after this life? And she said, no, I don't believe in God. And I asked her why. And she looked at me dead in the eyes. And she, she told me that when the Russians were here, they gassed her father right in front of her. Um, and she looked me dead in the eyes after she told me that. And she said, now you tell me that there is a God. Now you tell me that there exists a God after that. Um, after somebody can see something like that happen to their very own father. And so that was really hard for me. I mean, I mean you know, what, what can I say? I mean, all you can say is I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry that happened to you, but God does exist and he's there for you. He loves you. He wants you to be happy. He doesn't want to see you like this. That's exactly what I told her, but she just, um, she just, she lost a lot of hope you could tell in her life. Um, and it was like that for a lot of people that we talked to on the streets that we tracked it into. Um, another example, there was a guy, um, an old man, I think he said he was not about 93 years old. Uh, we tracked it into him and he opens the door and I mean, he just kind of looked, he didn't really look super happy. He didn't look super sad, was just kind of in the middle, you know, he's medium happy. <laughs> And, and we're talking to him, we're like, okay, well, we just had the strongest feeling that we should talk to him about the plan of salvation. And so we started talking about the plan of salvation and he starts, he starts to cry. And he says that we can't help him because, um, he just doesn't believe in that. There's no way he can ever believe in it. We asked him why he said his son 
had just died two days before we tracked it on his door. Um, and he started to bawl. I'd never seen an old man cry like that in my life. So it was really, it was really tough for me and my companion to see. Um, yeah, it was really hard. Um, you could just see the pain in his eyes. I mean, you think about you not being able to see somebody, um, after this life, you know, your, your dead grandmother, your dead mom, your dead dad. Um, it's just, it's heartbreaking. And to think that he thought that there was no way out of his pain, out of his misery, that just, that tormented me inside. You know, I think that torments all missionaries inside is that, you know, that this gospel can help them. You know, that this, that people need to know about this plan so they know where they're going, where they came from. So there's hope, but he just had no hope. He, he did not believe in anything. He thought, literally thought that that was the end. Um, and I mean, on earth, I, there's really no, nothing else worse that you can experience for me. Um, you know, you thinking that this is, this is it, this is, it's over after this. Um, you know, everybody wants to see their loved ones again. So there was that kind of grief and sorrow and hungry, um, because of the war, you know, because of just a lot of things that they, uh, that they went through as a country, they got betrayed often. They just been through a lot. They're very patriotic. They're very strong people, but um, they're real. They're very real. You know, they're not going to hide their grief behind a smile. You know, they're going to really let you know how they feel. And that was a great part of it is, is that we could just, we could just talk to people about whatever. If you ask somebody, the th cool thing about Hungary is if you ask somebody how they're doing, you say, um, then they tell you everything. You know, they, oh, my back hurts. Uh, my head hurts. My daughter just had a baby last night. I have five grandchildren. Life is great. Um, I just got a new job. It's awesome. They go into every single thing that they had experienced that week, you know, but if you ask somebody here in, uh, in America, how they're doing, they just say, how are you back? There's really no, uh, no huge response. <laughs> it's more of like a greeting here, but in Hungary, it's like, it's really, you're showing them that you really, really want to know how they're doing. Uh, you're telling them that you want to know. It's not just, Hey, how's it going? You know? Um, and so that's what I really liked. It made missionary work really easy.